Okay, so this video is going to be an introduction to stoichiometry. So, uh, why not start with the definition? Uh, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So, anytime you have a balanced chemical equation that shows a chemical reaction, you're going to have your reactants to the left of the reaction arrow and your products to the right of your reaction arrow. So, I've chosen a random reaction uh, to sort of define some terms here. And the reaction that I've chosen is the uh, combustion of propane, in which my reactants are C3H8, which is propane, and five oxygens. And my products are three CO2 molecules and four water molecules. So reactants on the left, products on the, on the right. So a verbal description of this reaction might be one C3H8 molecule reacts with five O2 molecules to form three CO2 molecules and four water molecules. Now these underlying numbers here, these are called the stoichiometric coefficients. And that means how many molecules do you need for this react of, of that particular chemical species uh, to make this particular reaction balance. Okay. Now this is all fine and good, this sentence here, but this is talking about molecules, and molecules are so small that for practical purposes, um, when you're working with them in a lab or putting them in calculations or anything, you, you'd end up with very, very large numbers. And uh, the way to help this out, to curb this a little bit, is by introducing the mole. So the mole, what the mole is, is the SI unit for amount of a substance. And the definition of a mole is the amount of carbon-12 atoms that weighs exactly 12 grams. And that turns out to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon-12 atoms. So anytime you have a mole of anything, that just means you're multiplying this number by one of whatever you're talking about. So a mole of eggs would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. Uh, a mole of pennies would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pennies. Or a mole of water molecules, a mole of water would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. So that's how a mole works. Now, to relate that back to this equation here, well, we just said that a mole is simply this large number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's just simply a large number that we multiply by everything. So in that sense, in this sentence here, we could every time we see the word molecule, we could basically uh, replace that with mole. So we could say that one mole of C3H8 reacts with five moles of oxygen to form three moles of CO2 and four moles of water. And the common mistake that people make here is that moles is differ, different from mass. Uh, this equation does not say that one gram of propane reacts with five grams of oxygen, no. It says that one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen. So if you are given mass, as you probably commonly will be, you must convert that mass to moles in order to use this balanced chemical equation to get what you want. And the way that you do that is by using molar mass, which is given on the periodic table. So I've chosen a problem it's going to be sort of an introductory problem to uh, maybe get started. So you can see how this all works. Let's see. Put my equation back up here. Okay. So this problem says, what mass of propane in grams is required to react with 5 grams, 5.0 grams of O2 in the above reaction? Okay. So the only two really the only two known values that we have are the only two things that can help us are this mass of oxygen that is given and this balanced chemical equation up here okay so it says we start out with 5.0 grams of O2 but like I said this equation does not have anything to do with grams it only has to do with moles so we must convert this 5.0 grams of O2 into moles using the molar mass given from the periodic table. So 
We're going to convert this to moles. We're going to put grams of O2 on the bottom. We're going to put moles of O2 on the top. And for every one mole of O2, there's about 32 grams. There's a couple of decimal places that I'm leaving out here, but uh, for simplicity, it's, you know, 32. So we've just converted the mass of oxygen into moles. And we are ever closer to finding out the mass of propane required to react with it. Now what we need to do is refer to the balanced chemical equation and find out the molar ratio or the relationship between O2, which is what we're trying to convert away from, and propane, which is what we are trying to convert to. And it looks like we have 5 moles of O2 for every 1 mole of propane. So I'm going to keep that in mind. On the bottom, we'll have moles of O2. And on the top, we'll have moles of propane, C3H8. And it says that there are 5 moles of O2 for every 1 mole of propane. So now we have moles of propane, but it doesn't ask, the question doesn't really ask for that though, it asks for the mass of propane in grams, so we have to set up yet another uh, conversion factor. So now we have moles of propane on the bottom, and now we have grams of propane on top. And it turns out that there are about 44 grams of propane per one mole. So if you make sure, always make sure to can cancel out your units, okay? Grams of O2 cancel here, moles of, moles of O2 cancel here, moles of propane cancel out here, and we're left with good old grams of propane. Okay, see how I did that? And it turns out that the answer, if you put this in a calculator, will be roughly 1.4 grams of propane.